my name is Mohamed Novitri I'm going to present about the introduction and some part from the literature review for the introduction that divided into two which is research background and some objective for research background Aquilaria species from the T. Malaysiae produce valuable agar wood which known as gaharu in Malaysia in Malay especially for economic, pharmaceutical and utilized as incense in many religion. For the distribution of aquilaria species which is native species for Southeast Asia which, which prefer rainforest environment. For example the country that have aquilaria species is a is a <coughs> is a Malaysia, Indonesia and so on. The most common species they can be found in in the Asia is Aquilaria malassensis, which is very common species over the Subra country. And these species mostly can be utilized for the formation of agar wood. These species can thrive with latitude of zero until eight hundred fifty meters and up to 1000 meters with daily temperature is a uh, 20 until 22 degrees Celsius. For the formation of the agar wood, the tree need to be infected by the wound or injured, which caused by the abiotic and biotic stress due to infection from the pests of or the fungi. The infected tree produce dark and moist stress induced aromatic resin which very valuable for the industry especially in the country for the formation of agar woods take at least 10 years for the commercial values of the agar wood the agar wood is very valuable and high demand especially in the global market the agar wood is commonly used in many fragrance medical preparation stimulant and tonic as you can see, the price due to high demand and uh, hard to obtain because the price per kilogram of agar wood is very very high, which can range from 100 US until to 100,000 US dollar. Due to high price in the global market, humans take an advantage by over harvesting the agar wood in the forest and sell it to global market. This human activity caused the population of 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 all aquilaria species is listed on the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora since 2004. Another part of introduction is a research objective. I and my group member conducting an aim for this study is a to investigate the aquila species seedling growth performance in different soil type and lack intensity which very important to make sure the the maintenance of the aquila species in the population next is about the lit literature review and i am going to present about the morphology of aquila species and factors affecting growth of aquila species another another part from the literature review Will be present by the Aizuddin and Said Hakimi. For the morphology of the aquila species, the aquila the aquila genus can be grown until 20 meter height, leaf shape of oblong, lanceolate or elliptic. The leaf venation parallel and petiole can be length until 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 centimeter long. This species uh, prefer the tropical rainforest with hot and humid environment. For the temperature for the growth of this genus is 20 until 28 degrees Celsius with the humidity 80%. For soil preferable, which is a sandy loam soil or slightly acidic soil. Next is the factor affecting growth of aquilaria species. For the first factor is lack intensity. For lack intensity is very important especially for the seed germination which can help to minimize the leaf transpiration and potential drought stress. 
the aquatic species prefer shade environment compared to direct sunlight. When the seedling is exposed to direct sunlight, which causes the soil become low moisture, low water holding capacity and high temperature, which causes the ability of seedling to germinate is reduced. For the succession, seed to germinate for the aquatic species is most mostly prefer shade compared to the direct sunlight for the mortality seeding rate is uh, high for the direct sunlight compared to shade for the moisture moisture is very important for enzyme activation to initiate the germination processes for the aquarium species for the seeding germination the aquarium species food already have a fleshy coating fruit which well is which provide the moisture for seedling survival in unfavorable environment the columbi shade also influence the soil moisture which cause the low red water evaporation of the seedling and the and from the soil for the succession of the seedling also height with the highest moisture and injury caused by the predator in the wild. For the soil type, the species can thrive with a various environment, even under wet climatic condition and even stresses. Aquarius species alone can grow under a rocky, sandy, calcareous soil, high slope, and swamp area. For the better cultivation of the aquarium species, the aquarium species can grow on the marginal land. For the better the seeding growth is on the tropical red soil which is very acidic soil. For Aquilaria genus, the different species of Aquilaria has specific temperature range and for germination, same goes with the pH. Seed germination of the Aquilaria is best at 27 until 32 degrees Celsius. For the optimal temperature, which range 27 anti 32 degrees Celsius of the aquila species cause the, the faster germination while too high or too low temperature reduce the germination of the aquila species seedling for the suitable pH of the aquilaria species germination is a slightly acidic which can range from 4 until 6 pH the slightly acidic of the soil because the Aquilaria species able to survive in stress condition, especially due to nutrition deficiency. I think that all for me. And next will be passed to the Aizuddin and Shedzul Hakimi. Assalamualaikum and hi, I be to everyone. My name is Muhammad Aizuddin Fahmi and my, mat my matrix number is 72346. Today, I am going to explain a part of the literature review which is the performance of Aquilaria species under different types of soil. Different types of soil will give a different growth rate of Aquilaria species. Different types of soil supply different soil variable, mineral content and nutrient content of the soil. Soil variable and nutrient content of plant has its own effect towards the growth of the plant. Referring to nutrient content, it can be divided into two parts, which are macronutrients and micronutrients. As for macronutrients, phosphorus help to stimulate the root growth and help the development of root of Aquilaria species. As for micronutrients, calcium, for example, helps to develop the leaves of Aquilaria species. Soil pH plays an important role in the growth of Aquilaria species as it influences the solubility of various mineral elements resulting in the availability of the mineral nutrients towards the growth of Aquilaria species. Soil texture is one of the important components as well. Soil texture consists of the combination of clay, sand and silt. Different percentages of these components will provide a better composition 
towards the growth of Aquilaria species. A better composition of soil texture also helps to improve the water retention. Thus, the essential amount of these soil variables and mineral nutrients helps to improve the growth rate of Aquilaria species. Next, we are going to do a literature review on performance of Aquilaria species under different light intensities. Uh, but first, let me introduce myself. My name is Saezu Akimi, and I will enlighten you in this part of the study. Aquilera species, also known as agarwood or gaharu, is a very famous tree known for its highly prized and the fragrant aroma. These trees are the only, are the only available in the forest, therefore making it the many plants that compete with many others for the resources, especially sunlight. This species adapts so well that this plant can cope with low light intensity available and make it a better requirement for their growth. Uh, a recent study has shown that the seedlings of Aquilera species germinate better under lower light intensity than they are in the higher light intensity. This proves that this species has adapted to become a more shade tolerant plant or even a maybe or even maybe a shade demand plan. The next part will be materials and method. We will begin the explanation of materials and method by explaining the study areas of these experiments that consist of field observation and nursery experiments. For field observation, we will be conducting this experiment in Kubah National Park. Kubah National Park is well known for its mixed diptroca forest and an unusual reach of Karangas forest. For nursery experiment, we will be conducting this experiment in Pusat Penyelidikan Tumbuhan, PPT, University Malaysia Sarawak, Unimas, where it is located at Kota Samarahan, Sarawak. The first experimental design starts with field observation. In this study, it will be carried out for about 12 to 14 months. Aquilaria species will be observed in Kubah National Park and each of its presence will be recorded. About 20 mature trees of Aquilaria species will be selected randomly in Kubah National Park. Then we will proceed to the next step of this method which is the observation of young trees around the selected mature trees. The observed young trees that are present around the selected mature trees will be classified following to its height. All of the seedlings and saplings will be taken and all of its total number will be recorded. The height of the seedlings and saplings will be measured by using measuring tape and its diameter will be measured by using calipers. Following a study for the effect of light intensity, the light availability for each set seedlings and saplings will be recorded by using light meter. The growth of the seedlings and saplings that presence around the selected mature trees will be observed for every four months. This experiment will be conducted for a following 12 to 14 months. After a period, regression analysis and growth curve will be conducted to investigate the relationship between light intensity and the growth of Aquilaria species. The second experimental design will be nursery experiment. In this experiment, there are two treatments or two factors that will be observed following to the growth of Aquilaria species, which are light intensity and the type of soil. This nursery experiment starts with obtaining uh, one month old seedlings from the local nursery around Kuching, Sarawak. Two treatments of light intensity and two treatments of types of soil are tested in this experiment. The one month old seedlings of Aquilaria species will be grown for about one month in a plastic pot. After a month, the seedlings will be selected randomly according to its height. About 40 to 50 selected seeds will be selected randomly from the plastic pots. 20 seedlings of Aquilaria species will be planted in 20 polyethylene bags for each 
factors that affect the growth of Aquilaria species. These 20 seedlings will then be divided into two as there are two treatments for every factors. For light availability or light intensity, there are two treatments that will be applied. One of it is the plant will be planted in an unshed area receiving a direct light availability from the sun. And the second one, the plants will be planted or grown on a black nylon netting, giving a reduced amount of light availability from the sun. For the types of the soil, each treatment will be given with different types of soil. One of the types of the soil is latosol and the second one is red podzolic soil. The growth of these seedlings will be recorded for every two weeks following about six to eight months. Next, let's discuss the expected outcome. We have divided the title to make you understand better about what we have done here. For the first part, let's discuss the performance of Aquilera species with different soils. Um, it is expected that different types of soils provide different nutrients that later impact growth of the seedlings. The best composition of nutrients, texture, soil temperature, and soil pH will provide the maximum potential growth of the plant. <laughs> Next part is the performance of Aquilera species under different light intensities. Um, it, is it is expected that the seedlings will germinate better under higher shade to, to support the information we had in the literature review that this species is shade demand and therefore make it grow way better under lower light intensity than they are in the higher light intensity. We also have provide the work schedule for this experiment where this work schedule consists from the proposal writing till the final report submission and the presentation. The first three months of this project will be started with proposal writing and presentation. In these three months, we will also be collecting data and we will be asking permission for field observation to be conducted in Kuba National Park and also the nursery experiment that will be conducted in Pusat Penyidikan Tumbuhan, University of Malaysia, Sarawak. From May 2021 until May 2022, we will be conducting field sampling, benchwork and sample processing. In this venture of time, we will be observing the growth of Aquilaria species on field observation and also in nursery experiment. Following four months in the range of time for the field sampling, we will be conducting progress report where we, will, where we will be measuring and recording every data regarding on the growth of Aquilaria species. From April 2022 until July 2022, we will be conducting data analysis as well as data interpretation where it will end on September 2022. Final report writing will start from August 2022 until December 2022. The last part of this work schedule we planned where final submission and presentation will be held on January 2023 until March 2023. For these following given times, we will check our data so that there are no errors that will be found in our data interpretation and our data analysis. That is all about the work schedule. Thank you for listening.